the first thing you need to know about rigging diagrams is that you're going to learn more about them when you take the rigging class. Uh, so this is the one I'm going to have you draw. And I'll, I'll take you through that um, as we go along here. But uh, when you take the rigging class, uh, Scott will kind of go over rigging diagrams a little bit. Um, <laughs> what's that? At the very end of the yeah. semester. He still hasn't given us our project. Yeah. So it will, he'll, he'll go over it a little bit. So you will hear about this some more. But um, and you, when you take the rigging class, a lot of this will make a lot more sense. But the gist of, of rigging is obviously, um, hopefully obviously, we don't want to drop things. Okay. Or Unless it's intentional. Right. Yeah, sometimes you drop things on purpose, but, but generally speaking, the point of a rigging diagram is to demonstrate that you understand how to hang whatever this thing is without dropping it, okay? Uh, or without crushing the thing that's holding it up, <laughs> which is similar to dropping it. Um, did you just drop something in, in, my, in my conversation about not dropping it? Uh, so the basic, the basic concept behind figuring this out is uh, all of the hardware that you use to hang something up in the air, uh, it, it has a certain strength to it, okay? And it will, um, there's a concept called a safe working load, uh, which is like, this is the amount of weight I can safely put on this particular thing without having to worry about it breaking. And there's some rules of thumb for, for that and what that means, because of course you, there's also a certain amount of weight that you know will break it. And so depending on what you're hanging, the safe working load might be different. Like if you're hanging a human, uh, you probably, you know, I think the rule of thumb is a 10 to one safe working load. So uh, if the thing will break at a thousand pounds, you don't want to hang more than a hundred pound human off of that. Um, because, you know, for a lot of reasons, because of dynamic loads and all these kinds of things. And you'll learn more about it in rigging class. Uh, so the purpose of the rigging diagram is twofold. One is you want to show how this thing is going to go together, all these little parts that you're, that you're going to need to uh, hang this thing. You want to make sure that you have diagrammed sufficiently how that goes together in what order. But then you also want to make sure that you're not notating what you understand the working loads of these of these things to be. So you know how much weight you have. So this loudspeaker weighs 49 pounds. So uh, that's the thing that we want, we want to make sure we don't drop is the 49 pound loudspeaker. Uh, and so you want to make sure that no part of the system that holds that up uh, is being stressed beyond its working load limit. So for example, uh, this little, this fly adapter too, that's something that came from the manufacturer uh, that they are saying, this is, you can use this to safely hang this last week. So great, that's fine. You don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, but that has to attach to something, okay? So they put a shackle um, on that and a shackle's just a, it's a little, looks like a horseshoe with a little pin through the, the ends of the horseshoe. Uh, and those are those tend to be it's a very strong uh, design uh, and this particular shackle a 3 8 shackle has a, a safe working load of three quarter ton which uh, I believe is 1500 pounds right no yes yeah. yes yeah okay so uh, that's a heck of a lot more than 49 pounds so we are totally fine Right, as long as we put that shackle in correctly and you know, make sure that it doesn't come undone and do all that kind of stuff, there's, it's unlikely that shackle is going to break because of that last speaker hanging off of it, right? Uh, and then we're attaching, uh, you know, what some would call a stinger, or it's just a, a set of, of wire rope or aircraft cable, sometimes it's called, and you know. Uh, it's, it looks like it's a eighth inch diameter wire rope, which would have a, a safe working load of 300 pounds. Uh, and if you terminate it just right, using all of these things that she's listed here, 
using the copper sleeve with the thimble and you crimp the copper sleeve just right, exactly the way the manufacturer said, then basically that you, you're not going to compromise that working load limit of that aircraft cable at all. Okay. Uh, some there are some things that you like if you terminated it with what we call wire rope clips, which would just be little um, clips that you would go and then you'd screw the, the little screws down on it and try to get it tight. Um, even if you do that perfectly to specification and properly torqued and everything, um, you still lose a, you know about 25% of the safe working load of that particular cable, something like that. So if if the safe working load is 300 pounds and you terminate it with wire rope clips, it, it no longer is a 300 pound safe working load, it's something less than that, okay? So that's why there's all this detail here about uh, what type of wire rope are we using, what type of sleeves, the thimbles and all that is because that is what allows it to stay 300 pounds, okay? So again, if the working load is 300 pounds and the thing that you're hanging weighs 49 pounds, you're fine. Should, you should be just fine, not have to worry about anything dropping. And then uh, there's a shackle here that is attached to that hunk of wire rope. And that is another 3 8 shackle that has a 3 quarter ton working load on it. You're just fine. And then they're using uh, this trim chain to go around this I-beam. And then they're using another shackle to put that together and then dropping it down. What is missing from here is the working load limit of the chain, right? So she didn't make that note. So that's a mistake on this particular uh, rigging diagram. So it sure would be nice to know what the, what the working load limit is of that chain. Um, so we're missing that. But uh, it went over the steel I-beam, uh, which you know it would also be nice to know What's the point load limit of that I beam? Like, what's the most weight you could put on any one spot on that I beam and not have to worry about it? Um, that'd be nice to know. Not on here, so that's pro that's a problem with the diagram. Uh, but other than that, I think this is a good diagram. Uh, the only thing I, I will say about it is that she spent an awful lot of time drawing chain <laughs> and uh, you know drawing you know the. Nicroplast sleeves with the thimble. I mean, no, she didn't do the, the sleeves, did she? Yes. Oh, okay. right. So Scott and Ricky was talking about how well, he hasn't told us how, but there's a place where you can go to download mm -hmm. already made like I beams with trim chain and stuff. So if you don't have. Oh yeah, them. there are symbol libraries all over the internet right. for some of this stuff. Would that be okay for us to use? For sure, I don't care. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> But I know for a fact that Jessica drew all these because that is just the type of person that she is. That's that's um, <laughs> She'll have an so IV with the trim chain for the rest of her life. Right, now she has her own symbol library. But so when I'm, you know, that part is not super important to me, like drawing that level of detail. I don't, I don't so much care about that. Um, what I want to make sure of is that you have accounted for all of the bits and bobs that you need to do this. Right, that you have called out all the things that you'll need, and that there is something drawn on that page that s symbolizes that object. Right. So if it's a shackle, a three eighths inch shackle. Now I don't need you to draw a perfectly scaled, detailed three eighths inch shackle with all of the, you know, the stamps on it. And I don't need all of that. But there should be some object on your rigging diagram that you drew. <laughs> that has a label that says that is a 3 8 inch shackle, okay? It could just be a circle <laughs> that you drew uh, that says this circle means 3 8 inch shackle, right? So uh, I don't need all of that level of detail. That being said, let me sort of show you uh, some strategies for drawing this. Um, so the first thing uh, is, what about this, this loudspeaker? Um, I guarantee you that she did not draw this. She got that from the manufacturer's website. So, so the speaker is really easy to get from DMV, but the the flyware you, you cannot you cannot through. get that. You have to send in them an email asking for right CAD drawings, and then they'll give it to you. Um, and I mean that one's also not not drawn 100 percent accurately. So 
Yeah, I'm sure Jessica tried to draw that herself. Because it sticks off the back of the speaker. Oh, and I it's well, feels so unnecessary. So not necessarily. This this particular fly bar, you can mount it two ways. Yeah. And one way it sticks out the end, and the other way it doesn't. So, uh, but what she's not saying in this is which of those things she's doing. So which orientation is this thing loaded on? So in a perfect world, you would have that notation that you know if there's more than one way to attach this thing, then you would say here's the way that I'm attaching it, so that. You know, so it makes sense. That being said, I also don't care that the bracket doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't matter that the bracket is perfectly to scale with all the details. I don't really care about that. But I do care that you've at least acknowledged the fact that there is a, this thing called the DMB flying adapter 2 uh, and that you are going to use that. And you ought to also call out which hole you're going to attach to because that has a, an effect on which angle you use. So she didn't do that here, um, but you know, not the end of the world. Uh, so let me show you how you can get this. So this is like DMB's website, um, and uh, I'm going to go to downloads. Maybe this will work. There we go. Um, and if you go to categories, you can do CAD data. And I'll just show me all the CAD data. Let's just do that. So here's CAD drawings for different things, right? Um, y series, Y sub, Y8. Um, they actually have one of these links here is they have one that's like a whole bunch of stuff all together. Um, I'm not sure. Let me, so if I just search for Q10, let's see if it gives it to me. There it is, CAD drawing for Q10. So if I download that, it's a zip file, and it gives me several different views of this thing that they drew. So this is, that's the front of it, right? Uh, with it open, this is the front with the cover on it. Okay. Um, this is what the back of it looks like. This is what the side, what they call the side of it looks like. I would call that the top in this particular configuration that we're drawing. Uh, and there you go. So that's where she got this from. So uh, ultimately, you could, you could take that and just copy that. And then in your new file, you could paste put that in there. And then ultimately you'd rotate it, right? So something like that. Uh, and then, you know, if you were going to draw that little fly adapter, we could figure that out. So maybe I would draw a rectangle-ish thing like that. And it needs six holes. So I'm going to give myself a few construction lines here just to help me break this up. Um, give me an extra line there. And another one there. And maybe I'll mirror this line over there. This will give me some frame of reference to how to do this. So if I do, I can do a circle that'll be along here. And I can figure out how big that need, would need to be. Sure, that looks good. And then I could mirror that over to here. Oops, hang on. 
mirror that here. No, don't erase. Uh, and then I could copy this one. Oops. Maybe like that. I'm not being super precise here. And I could mirror that over here. And then maybe I'll copy this one, mirror it. Oops. See? Oh, no, I'm going to mirror this. MI for mirror. This one across that axis. Oops. What did I do? There we go. And then I will mirror this one across this axis. Okay, so they're not perfectly spaced, but it's, you know, close enough. Um, I can get rid of my construction lines now. Get rid of that reference line. And then, you know, if I wanted to do the rounded corners of it, you know what that's, anybody know what that's called? That's fillet. Fillet. It's more fun to say fillet. So you get a, you got a fillet. Or like a champagne. And uh, all you do in, with fillet is you just click both sides of the corner and it rounds it. And you say, oh, it barely rounded it. But if you zoom in, it did a little bit. It gets bored if you don't spice up the kitchen. So, uh, if we go instead and we say, give me a radius, because that's one of my options here. Um, so based, I, I never set my units on this thing when I started, so I, it's probably millimeters or something. Uh, so yeah, I'll say seven. And then we go to there. Oh, it didn't like that. Radius. Uh, it probably when I filleted that line, it probably got messed up. Let me try this one. There it goes. See that? So that's how, that's how you would create that that side, and then I, what I'll do is it actually creates. Oh, it does that one. So I'm gonna I'll explode this, and then that gives me this as a separate object, which I can then just mirror over here since I can't figure out what's wrong with it. <laughs> um, and then I'll. I mean, I'm cheating here, I know. I know, Deanne, I'm cheating. No, you have that line. When you drew the circle, you have that reference line. Uh, oh, that's right. It's probably that. Yeah, it was probably that extra reference line I drew. Let's see if I can make that go away. Yeah, it's that one. Get rid of that. Yeah, you're right. That's probably why it was giving me a hard time. But I cheated and fixed it anyway. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So I drew something now that looks kind of like that rigging bracket, yeah? And so now I can just take it and plop it right here. And for Ryan's sake, I'll even have it stick off the back a little bit. She had the bolt strong, like it was sticking off the back. Okay. Uh, so, you know, then I need a shackle, right? So I'll say, um, I'll just do a rectangle. Oops, I need to erase that. Do a rectangle from here, maybe like that. <laughs> and then I could even fill it that if I want. Then I could even, I could do a little trim here, get 
rid of that. And I could even do a little circle in the middle of this to make it look like there's something in there. <laughs> you see what I'm doing? I mean, I'm not, I, I'm not drawing this perfectly. Just, I'm just trying to make a symbol that stands in for the thing that I'm trying to do, OK? Right? There, that's a, well, I can call that a shackle. That's fine, OK? You get the idea here? Uh, so then uh, you got to do uh, the call outs, which um, I believe. So you can do, uh, I think you can do it with a dimension, or you can do, there's actually another one that you can do, but. Uh, So I suspect that the best place to do it is going to be to use a multi-leader style, which is this kind of thing. Um, and so you can do a multi-leader style, and you can customize that text and all that kind of stuff. So if I just leave it as is right now, um, then uh, you can do this. And I can say that thing is a three-eighths inch shackle working load limit of three-quarter ton or you could say 15 you, see, you get the idea and it's like wow it's really tiny well that's just because I didn't I, you know I've got to scale uh, my text a little bit so let's see There we go. I could make it even bigger than that. I probably should, shouldn't I? Uh, let's, I'm going to say, there we go. You get the idea? Yeah. Um, so that's kind of, that's what I want you to do for the, when I want to do the final is, uh, I'm only going to have you do, I'm, you know, this is the part I want to sanitize is I don't want to make you do 10 rigging diagrams <laughs> That's part of your final. I just want you to do one drawing of each different thing, each different type of, of plate for the final. So uh, we can actually figure this out right now. So if I give you the, so this is the one I wanted to give you because I like it. Um, so I'm going to say, I don't care about the cover sheet. So we get rid of that. And yeah, this is a heck of a system diagram. So good luck with that. <laughs> um, and let's see. I will have you do that full patch plot. I'm not. Absolutely. So uh, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna make you do the control diagram. Um, and therefore, I'm not gonna make you do the control patch plot. Um, I do want you to do this and this. I do not need you to do any of these. So you'll learn how to do that some other time. Uh, I don't need you to, I only need you to do one of these rigging diagrams. So get rid of this one. You do not this and not that. So these are just other examples of rigging diagrams. You know, she went in and drew the pipe with the clamp and she's, you know, labeled everything. Um, so I don't need you to do that. Now here is the gotcha. And this is one of the things I want you to play around with. Is I'm going to have you do, let's do this one. I'll, do, I'll have you do this power diagram. Actually, I'll have you do these two. Um, but I need you to 
translate these into the format that I taught you. <laughs> okay. So I want you to look look at these uh, to these two power diagrams and try to figure out what she was communicating there and translate that into the format that I taught you. Okay. And if you need help with that, ask. So start now, and then when you say, I'm not sure how to interpret this diagram, what does that mean in the context of what I was talking? Then you can ask me, and I can answer that question for you. Right? But if you ask me, you know, like 10 minutes before class starts, the day that's due, <laughs> maybe not going to be so helpful, right? So uh, start now. Uh, I'm not going to make you do this. Um, I'm not going to make you do these ClearCom, because we didn't talk about that. I mean, it's not that complicated, but it's not something that I want you to spend a whole lot of time wrestling with for purposes of this class, because it's not super important. At least for now, it will be important someday. Um, <laughs> I will make you do one of these rack diagrams, which I didn't teach you to do, but I think you get the idea, right? It's not the most complicated piece of CAD you've ever seen. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to make you do the pit layout. Um, let's see. I'm not going to make you do the console patching. Um, I'm not going to make you do any of these. Um, <laughs> and I'm not going to make you do the shop pull list. Don't worry about that. I do want you to do the timesheets. The good news is you've already done them. Did you catch that? So that, that was the that was part of the master plan. Was just do Jessica's Raz. Right, Did you purposely show us what you're not making us do so we can't complain about the amount of work you are making? That's exactly what. That's smart. That was really smart. No, no, I mean, I was going to have that conversation, but I, I, <laughs> I, I clearly, I clearly got off a week and realized that I should have done this for today. So, all right. So that is, I think, everything I want you to do. So that diagram, that patch plot. Um, that ground plan, that section view, that rigging diagram, these power diagrams, rack diagrams, timesheets. Okay, so that's it. Now, skipping lunch. Now, <laughs> no, no. I'm not expect. What I'm not expecting you to do is recreate this exactly like this. So I need you to recreate that system diagram, but more sp specifically, recreate the diagram of this system, okay. which means um, I don't need you to, it, you know, I, I'm not going to like over, I'm print these out on paper, overlay them and make sure that all the lines lined up, right? <laughs> like that's not what I'm trying to do. But I do want you to look at that diagram and just draw that and it, make it look nice. And, uh, you know, she was specifically trying to fit this on a specific piece of paper. You might find that you could spread that out a little bit. Yes. So for those of us in the audience who are confused, what is due next week? Nothing. Okay. So what are we doing in class next week? You're going to work on this. Okay. So on the week after next week, this is... Yep. Because one of the things I'm going to show you in next week is on schedule I said I was going to show you how to assemble Package. packages or something. So I'm going to I'm going to just show you a little bit about wrangling Acrobat. Um, to once you create all these PDFs, how do you get them all in one thing and all that kind of stuff? So I will spend a little bit of time just kind of showing you that because uh, I do want you to do that as part of the final. Uh, and I'll write this all up and put it on the Canvas side, site. Um, but uh, so I will spend just a little bit of time next week doing that. But the rest of the time you can be working on this, and when you have questions, I can help you. So what would be super cool is if by next Wednesday, you've already started on this. And maybe you're already halfway through it. And you know what you don't know. And so you know what to ask me uh, during class next week so that I can make sure we maximize that opportunity. Nice. Yeah, Ryan. Um, so I'm just asking about the history of, of our paperwork. From here and from further past here to currently, a lot of things have changed in terms of like 
everything is now included inside of um, like inside of a title block in AutoCAD versus just being in certain pages in Acrobat. Uh, like things have gone away, like console patching and or digitally inside of the console and I mm -hmm. clear comp matrix thing has sort of seemed to have gone away. So why did that happen? Um. Well, so for example, we didn't you, we didn't always do shop builds. So back when this show happened, they didn't build this system in the shop before they went and did it in the theater. So there were some things that I had them try to figure out ahead of time, like that console patch spreadsheet, uh, because they weren't going to have the real console with them until they were in the space, and I wanted them to think through all of that ahead of time. But now that you're building it in the shop, um, you know, you're basically programming the console as part of the shop build. And therefore, you know, and I look at it before I let, let it go out. So I don't necessarily need a piece of paper that shows me what's going on in there because you're going to have the real thing. Uh, as far as the, you know, things being played with the title block, I've never felt super strongly about that. That's something that students have wanted to do, and I've not, I've decided not to fight them on it. Because I, I don't really care, actually. Uh, I don't care whether it has a title block on it or not. I, I do think that a lot of people spend way too much time trying to figure out how to make that work than they maybe should. Because um, I'm not sure the payoff is worth it for the amount of time they spent trying to figure out how to get everything with their CAD title block on it. Um, but that being said, since then, uh, you know, AutoCAD has made that process quite a bit easier now that you can like import a PDF and play and put that in. And then there's so things that that used to be a very difficult process. Now it's a much easier one. Uh, so. I don't, that's not super important to me. Like, this, obviously, she didn't do that with this one. She didn't play, and that's fine. I don't, this is fine with me. Uh, so, like, if we were to not have our time sheet and stuff played in title blocks. Yeah, I, that's fine. Yeah, right? And then also, with the sort but of I will have <coughs> not rack diagrams, you know, some people do them in Excel and then import them, and other people do them in AutoCAD. How do you feel about that? I don't care. <laughs> How do you feel about the ones that are super extra that actually have the rack equipment in there? Right, if you do that, I like to actually draw that. all the knobs yeah. and buttons. Like Don't that. worry, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I, I think that's stupid. Um, right, I can't trust you on that button. I think that's a waste of time, but you know. But if that makes you feel good, then go for it. Um, so, so yeah, so some of these drawings, you know, are going to require more adaptation than others. For example, these power diagrams. You're going to have to spend some time reading this power diagram, figure out what it means, what it says, so that you can draw it in a different way. Like you absolutely will have to draw these power diagrams in a different way. Spreading uh, across multiple plates, but honestly, looking at the, looking or not not just the power diagrams, but like all of the things. Can we split them into different plates? Because the the um, the equipment, the really big one. The system diagram. Yeah. Uh, that gives me a headache. Well, me a headache. I do think that yes. you can think about a larger paper size for that, right? Okay. Because that's part of what makes this look this way. She was trying to fit it in this size of paper. Are we printing these? I'm not going to make you print them, but you do have to plot them to a PDF, and if yeah. you have to specify a paper size, it does need to be possible to print them. It's going to be 24 by 24. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, if it makes more sense to, if, if squishing this down into 11 by 17 just makes it ridiculous to read, then fine. You know, diagram it in a way that makes it easier to read and then figure out what size of paper you need to put that in to be able to read it. Okay? So that's fine with me. Um, when I look at this, I'm going to be looking at uh, how did you lay it out? Is it clear? Is all the information there? Or, you know, are there mistakes? You know, all that kind of stuff. Did you capture all the data? That's what I'm interested in. Um, I'm not so I don't care so much about whether you actually copied this this drawing. Um, you know, for example, in this case, uh, she is not, if not perfectly to scale, she's at least referencing the concept of scale uh, for the different sizes of loudspeakers. Uh, and some of these are probably smaller than they need to be. Like those little E zeros. I mean, that's awfully small to try to read on that little drawing. So you know, it's okay if you make those boxes a little bit bigger, just so that we can see them. Um, that's okay. Um, so certainly, you can you can adapt these. But 
just keep in mind that presentation counts. Presentation counts in these drawings. It's not just about is the information in there. Is does it look professional? Does it look like someone who knows what they're doing drew this thing? Okay. Uh, does it look like the person who drew this is someone I should trust? Right? Because these are the things people ask when they look at your drawings. Uh, it's like, do I do I trust this person with this project? Because it. Because this, this document looks really sloppy. So does, it, does that mean that they're sloppy about everything they do? Or are they just sloppy about their cat? Uh, you know what I mean? So you should work hard to make this look nice and professional and slick and all that kind of stuff. OK? So uh, that is it. Any other questions about that? Wait, yes. Yes? Will you create my template? I have a nothing for it in Canvas. I will. <laughs> I will do that sometime. Before the end of the semester. I appreciate that. I mean, that's all I really care about. You still got print in, so. No, it's in. My printing upon the assignment and my annotations are better because I wasn't there for either of those classes. Uh, so I will put this on Canvas right now, and then you guys can start working on it. Um, but, you know, maybe start with that rigging diagram, since, since that involves some drawing skills that might be a little bit new to you. Um, so you can start working on that now. But I, you've got an hour that you can start on this project. So okay. final. What, a, what theater is that? Friedman. This is the Friedman Theater. Are you also attaching a, uh, a, a, a DWD style you can have the? Uh, I can show you where to get it. Yeah. Can I have this on Rachel? Um, That's not bad. I feel I like mean, you get the full, the full one, or yeah, the full one. Yeah. Oh, um, it's actually yeah, I can send it to you. Yeah. So, um, all right, let me let me put that on. Did someone just walk through here? All right, so I'm going to yeah, There we go. So, I mean, I'm going to change this cuz I did post an assignment for that ring diagram, but I realized I don't want to make you do that as a separate thing. So, I'm going to call that the final project. Save that. Let me edit that assignment now. So, Yes, I am going to have a conversation with you guys in a minute. So, just give me one minute and I will come back to you. It's fine. We, we have that, right? What's that? I mean, no. Yeah, I have to I have to give you extra to do. Oh. Cuz you are You are to be held to a higher standard. So you can get those extra I feel like that would be a good No, I'm not going to make you What's the extra? I think doing one. Yes. 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 Where you're going. That's <laughs> under 10% where I'm going. Okay. Um, or you could use these two. Those workstations too. Yeah. Darker in there. Yeah. Um, it's relaxing with that. All right. 
So uh, you should see that now on Canvas. And let me show you where you can get drawings of the, of the theater. So uh, if you go onto our Walrus server, well, he left. So uh, if you go onto the Walrus server and you go to Show Archives, here's a folder called UNCSA Theaters. And that has CAD files for all of our theaters. Um, so you would want this performance pl place Friedman. And then you can copy that to your computer, and then you'd have the Friedman drawings that you'll need to do that ground plan section. All right? The username and password is sound. So that should not be super important. And all of, you all of YouTube now knows that, so that's fine. <laughs>